Hello everyone, welcome back to Jack Scraps. Thank you for joining me today for our What A Card series. So I've been trying to film a intro for a couple times now and I did it online and actually I think I like this better. It's a smaller framed video, so I hope you don't mind, but it's a little more intimate. <laughs> So today I wanted to share a truffle box card that I found online and I thought it was so adorable I had to share. So there will be some SVG files as well as I'll show you how to do it in case you don't have a cutting machine. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing you need to do is go to your internet and type in birdscards.com, both are plural, and this website will appear. Now the easiest way to get to the file that we're going to create is go over here to the right hand side and type in truffle box card and search. It will take you here to their list of um, projects. We're going to click on that and go straight into the blog, if you will, that talks about this card. Isn't this adorable? I love these designs that they've shown here as examples. There's a nice little download button. You just click on that and the files will open. What you'll do is you'll take these, drag them over to a file on your computer and save them. Now I've already done that so I don't need to do that but I did want to show you how to get to those files. Very easy. The next thing you need to do is open up your Cricut Design Space, go to Upload, and select this image one, Upload Image, and then you will find your files, and then you will take the box base one at a time and drag your files into Cricut Design Space. Now because these are SVG files, you don't have to worry about any of the white space because there isn't any. It's already put in the name, and you just hit save. Now I've already done that to each of the images which you can see here. I've already saved into my design space. And then of course you click on them to insert the image and you go from there. Now when I did this I did not resize anything. They came in as true size of the project that was on the website. So if you want this to be bigger then you'll have to do the resizing yourself and really that's just clicking the arrow box down here and making it bigger to whatever size you want. So now that I've showed you how to import them into your Cricut Design Space, I'm going to switch the cameras over and show you how I put the design that I created together. So here I'm showing you all of the cut files that come in the SVG file itself and I'm just putting those together. I'm starting with the two pieces that look like a U and adding those. I did not cut out the one that has a label on it. I just cut two of these solid U type pieces. So that's what you're seeing here. I am using Fabri-Tac glue to put these together. And once they're on, you'll take this and um, you'll fold the base in half which creates the base of the holder for the box. Next, we're going to take the box itself and burnish all of the score lines that were created during the cutting phase, if you use a cutting machine. And here I'm just kind of squaring it up there. What we're going to do next is put glue on the small flaps, on the outside of the small flaps, and then move them to the inside and bring the sides of the box up to meet them and kind of square that off to make sure they fit there and then repeat that on the opposite side. Next we'll take the black piece which is the base of the box lid and burnish all of those score lines. The small flaps that you'll see we're going to add a glue to the outsides of those kind of like we did with the box and just repeat that same process here bringing up the long flap to meet the small tab and close that up squaring it and then that creates your lid. Also, 
Now the cut file also includes a square, which is the top decorative piece for the lid, and you can cut that out as well and adhere it. Now I'm gonna switch the camera over and show you my final project. So before we get started, I wanted to let you know that you will have a different sound in this part of the video, and that is because I'm using a different setup. Okay, let's get started here. And I wanted to start off by showing you the paper line that I used to create my project, and that is My Mind's Eye Gal Meets Glam. I had the paper as well as the ephemera pieces. So here is my final project. It would sit on your desk like that. Here is the profile. You can move the box, you know, more forward or backward, however you like. But we can take the box out, and then this is it without, you know, the box in it. So here's the box. I used some foil cardstock and cut out this bow using my Cricut, added a little rhinestone there. I did add another piece of the decorative paper in here on this lid just to give it some more stability and I kind of like that um, after I did it. So that turned out really cute. On here I added two of the ephemera pieces from the collection. I added a bow to the back of this little lady. I love that after I did it. It almost looks as if she's got like this little shawl going on. I love it. I had had this heart and I added some gold ribbon here that I um, foiled back and forth, you know. Pleated is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I pleated it and sewed that onto the heart and put that down first and then added her. Later on, I did add this sentiment looking good from the collection as well. Use some of that Dollar Tree uh, pink ribbon that was new and put that on the back side of it added a couple flowers and some more rhinestones here. I just love how this turned out. It is such a really cute project. You know, if you have something small that you want to give someone other than a truffle, <laughs> it would certainly fit in there and just slides like that. I would recommend using a sturdy base. Um, the black cardstock that I have is, is good, but not that sturdy, so I almost wanted to put another piece there to make it sturdier, but I didn't. Um, so I just wanted to recommend to use a more sturdy base um, piece when you're making the card base. So what I want to do next is to show you how to create this if you don't have a cutting machine. So if you are going to leave this video now because you have a cutting machine, thank you for joining me. Uh, don't forget to like and comment down below and I'll see you next time. But for those sticking around, let's get to it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take a piece of cardstock and cut it down to three and a half by six. So now that we have our six by three and a half cardstock cut out, what we're going to do, take our corner chomper and round all of our corners. We're going to need a ruler and pencil. Let's turn our paper long ways. And from the left-hand side, we're going to align our ruler to the edge of the cardstock. Go in one and three-fourths and make a line. And I'm just making my mark kind of in the center right now. The next thing we're going to do is the same thing on the right-hand side. So we're gonna go in one and three-fourths and make a little pencil mark. Next, we're going to turn it to portrait, go in, again, lining up our ruler with the edge of the cardstock, and make a mark at 7 8 inch on both sides. Okay, so what we have here are some random marks. I hope you can see these. What we need to do is connect these into a square. So the best way to do that is using the first mark that we have from the edge of our cardstock here. Go in 7 eighths of an inch, just like we did before. 
and do the same thing on the right hand side. But you're going to align it with this mark that we already have. This will now help you create the line. It's like connect the dots. I think what we'll do is turn that around and do the same thing down below. Okay, so here was my first mark. I'm going to line the ruler up with that mark, go to the 7 8 inch, and make a mark. And I'm going to do the same over here. but still keeping it in line with this mark. Okay, and now you can draw your line. And you can connect your ends. one so you can see it. Mine might be a little sloppy because I was doing it a couple times, but that's how you could easily get the square in the center. Okay, for this I like to use a metal roller, but use whatever you have. Line up your ruler with the marks that we created, and then go ahead and cut that out. And there we have it. It's all cut out and actually mirrors what we had before. Now that we have the base of our card, what we're going to do is cut out some of the other pieces. Now I'm using white just to show you so that you can see it really well. Um, but this particular piece would be a decorative piece. Okay, so just so that you know that. And um, what this is, is the top of the piece that goes on to the box lid. And this is one and three fourths by one and three fourths. Okay, so we need to cut that out. So there's our piece for the top of the lid. Now we're going to be cutting out these U-shaped pieces going to use this piece of scrap that I have. Now we are going to get into the 16th type measuring. If you don't like that, I'll give you an alternative, but it will um, require some trimming then probably. So what we need is a piece that measures 3 and 7 sixteenths across, or you could go to 3 and 3 eighths, and then the width would be 2 and 15 sixteenths or 2 and 7 eighths. Okay? So I'm going to do the 2 and 15 sixteenths. So you will need two of these, and these would actually be deco paper that you're using to cut these out. Again, I'm just doing it on white so that you can see it. The next thing we need to do is cut out the part that makes it a U. Okay, with your piece of decorative paper, remember this is a decorative piece, we're going to measure 7 eighths inch from the left hand side and make a mark 7 eighths. Do the same thing on the opposite side, measure in 7 eighths and make a mark on the inside. So you'll have two little marks at the top. The next thing we're going to do is, once we have the marks at the top, we're going to turn the page. Take your ruler, line it up with the first mark and the edge of the paper, and then we're going to go in one and a fourth and make a mark. We're going to turn the page and do the same thing. 
with our mark here, line up our ruler, and make a mark at one and one fourth inch in. Now what you can do is take your ruler and draw your lines, and you're going to form the U and it will look something like this. So what we'll do then is take our scissors and we will cut out the part that we just marked. Now you could also use your knife again if you wanted to. And there we have it. Once you have this, you can take your corner chomper again, round the edges, and then you would have your decorative piece that looks like this. To create the box, what we need is a piece of decorative paper, or you could do, I guess you could do um, a plain cardstock and then put your decorative pieces on that. I just use decorative paper, so I'll leave that to you. But we need a five and a fourth by five and a fourth piece of cardstock. So next we're going to need to do some scoring, so pull out your scoreboard, or you can use a ruler and a um, bone folder. I'm using this, I don't know what this is, you guys, I don't know what it's called. Okay, so we're gonna go in at one and three fourths, make a mark all the way down, go in at three and a half, score all the way down. Next, we'll turn our paper one turn to the left-hand side and score at one and three fourths. And what I'm going to do here is take it and turn it 180 degrees, that's two flips, and score at one and three fourths. Okay, after we're done with our scoring, this is what it would look like. Just wanted to do this to show you. And now what we're going to be doing is some cutting. I'm going to use my smaller scissors for this. We're going to cut up the line of one of, you know, the first box on the bottom right hand side. Just cut straight up. We're going to do the same for the left hand bottom box. And then take this, turn it to the side and cut half of that block off and then we're also going to taper in the one side and taper in the other side okay so we turn it cut it about halfway then we taper the inside and taper the outside and then we repeat it on the other side Now if you want to be exact, you can measure these out halfway. I'm just guessing right now since this is basically a template for me, but just showing you how to create it. So this is what it will look like when we're all done. The next thing you do is go through and score all the lines. So then at the end, it will come together like this, okay? 
So that is your box. Now, if now remember, you're cutting this out in decorative paper. It will look like this. I'm just doing the white again so that you can see all the lines and everything. To create the lid, we're going to need a piece of white cardstock because that will mirror the base of the card, which was also a white cardstock. This will be, again, another funny measurement. Um, but again, this is if you're following the SVG file, you know, to exact. So it is 2 and 13 16 by 2 and 13 16. Okay? And that is right after the 3 fourths mark. And it will be about this size. Next we'll need our scoreboard. Okay, we're going to put this in our scoreboard and we're going to score at a half an inch on all sides. Turn it to the left, half inch, again, half inch, and one more time. Okay, so it will look like this when we get done scoring. And now we're going to do cutting just like kind of what we did before. So on our lower right hand box, what we're going to do is we're going to cut at the top of it. And then we're also going to angle in on the box side, not the long tab side. Okay, so it will look like this. We're going to turn it once and do the same thing. So it will always be at the top of the box that we cut. We just cut into where the lines meet and then we taper just a little bit. Again, turn. Just do the top and taper. And one more time. And then we have our lid. And so we just go ahead and burnish all of those score marks. Here it is. I didn't know where it was before. <laughs> well, here's one of them anyways, so yeah. Burnish them really good. Okay. Review the pieces because that was a lot of cutting and everything. So here is our base piece. We cut two of these. We have one for the back and one for the front. Then we also cut out a box, which was like this. We have one decorative piece that goes on top of the lid, and then we have the lid that we cut out. Here it is in a clean piece. Wanted to show you the templates as well as the other pieces. Okay, so you just take your box. I usually fold it together and slide the box in, and then you can fan these out like that, like a little tent. And there we have it. Now I'm not going to go through the task of decorating this with you. Um, I'm sure you have some great decorating ideas and this video is getting kind of long. So that's how you make a truffle box card or just box card. Um, really fun to create and extremely easy and I think it makes a great impact as a little gift. So I hope you will give it a try. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.